Welcome to Series 30, everyone. Holy cats, that's 90 regular series episodes. It's been a fantastic journey to get here, but I won't celebrate too much right now because Amelia is currently on the road as I record this cold open, which means you are stuck with me for the next minute or so. First things first, a huge congrats goes out to the folks over at Asians Represent for their Any Gold win for Best Podcast. This is so very well deserved, and if you haven't gone to listen to that show, I absolutely recommend doing so. We're still doing one to two week breaks between series, which has been so good for our mental well-being. So that should give you time to sneak in a few episodes of their show after catching up with ours, of course. Another congrats goes out to Amelia as well, who has been chosen as a judge for next year's Annie's. I know she's both excited and nervous for this opportunity, but I think she'll do great. Also, a big congrats goes out to all the other folks who won big over this last weekend. I don't think I have anything else to say during this cold open. I know things are still uh, waving arms wildly in life right now. Uh, and we are both very thankful that you've stuck with us through all of this. I hope that you are staying well. And if you want to let us know how you feel about this podcast, feel free to head on over to Apple Podcasts. Podchaser, or any other podcast review site, and leave us a rating and review. All five-star reviews really help us out and help others to find our podcast, and I know it gives us some really great feels, especially during these tough times. And it's free to do, which is also great. But I digress. With all of that out of the way, join us on this quest to cover Quest with Kyle and Russ from Prism Pals and enjoy the show. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia, and this episode, my co-host Ryan and I are excited to welcome Kyle Allen and Russ Wild from the Prison Pals podcast to discuss Quest, a fantasy role-playing game by the Adventure Guild. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, both of you. We're really excited you could join us. Thanks for having us. Happy to be here. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and start by introducing both of you to our audience. Uh, Kyle, can you tell us a bit about uh, yourself and where people can find you online, any projects that you're currently involved in, all that sort of fun stuff? Uh, well, we are from the Prison Pals podcast, which is an all LGBTQ plus queer, uh, family friendly, all ages podcast, actual play, all those good things. I just listed off the same thing five times. That's fine. Um, <laughs> My name is Kyle. Uh, I am on Twitter at super underscore. No, no underscore anymore. Super queero. I got the underscore removed. Finally, big contention there. Long story. We don't need to go into that. <laughs> super at super queero. Um, and I just released my first game uh, on my new itchio. Um, I do stuff with off the table, the stream uh, and podcast network. So I'm all over the place. But mostly prison pals, where my life is beholden to. <laughs> and Russ, what about you? Uh, I'm Russ. I use they/them pronouns. You can find me on Twitter at Russ Wildest. I am the guide for the Prison Pals podcast, which is at Prison Pals on Twitter. Um, since Kyle forgot that, I'm sorry. Uh, Way to go, Kyle. <laughs> I know. I. Also, am sometimes on Off the Table on Fridays, and I'm also on Utopia, a BIMPOC run and community led streaming channel. Uh, yeah, you can also hop on our Prison Pals Twitch, where me and one of our other players play Cat Quest. Ooh. 
Quack Quest 2. Good times. (laughs) Awesome. All right, well, let's go ahead and get into this, and we will start by discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game? All right. Uh, can you go ahead and tell us a bit about what what is Quest? What What's the setting of Quest? So, Quest has a like very, very basic setting that the game comes with, which is, hey, there are multiple planes. It's easy to travel between them. All sort of wacky things happen in them. There's like your plane, the shadow plane the weird magic plane and then one other that I can't remember but very much the setting is very details light for what the book gives you um it really does lead to you building your own worlds your own settings your own towns that kind of thing Mm -hmm. um it's very much just a here's a basic framework so you understand how the powers work kind of thing go ahead and have fun there you go (laughs) <laughs> nice. uh, good Very old simple. good old fantasy sandbox. Mm-hmm. What sorts of things do we need to play this game? Quest is a uh, single D20 system. So all you need is one D20. So if you play Magic the Gathering, you're set. Um, <laughs> and you can buy the core rulebook, which is really all you need to do it online. You can get the PDF version or you can get like the physical copy. There's also a nicer physical copy, which is real pretty. Um, there's all <laughs> types of other things that are like supplemental that you don't really need to play the game. All you really need is one die and the book. Everything else is like you can get uh cards uh there's decks of monster cards and item cards you can play with but most of it's just in the one game in one book although i will say that if you get the pdf version of it it comes with the deck and the uh monster cards as like pdf versions of it so if you wanted to you could cut them out print Mm -hmm. them that kind of thing and make your own cards at home um it's just that the versions that quest you can buy they're so pretty yeah, uh, I'm such I a sucker for stuff them. like that. I'm like, I don't need it, but like, yeah. I just really want it. I so. was I was reading those, and they're they're tarot sized cards, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is just phenomenal. And I saw the like the box of the core cards is just looks huge, and if they're tarot sized cards, that's extra huge. And and I want it, but it's all sold out. <laughs> <laughs> it's until, massive until October. It's massive. Look at that thing. Oh, it's, wow. it's a big boy. Yeah. <laughs> I say as I hold it up, it is larger than my head. Yeah. <laughs> it is. That's amazing. And I have a big head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Excuse the noise as I put it away again. Back where it belongs. Go back to where you came from. <laughs> back into but the quest yes, shrine. It's a very very simple game when it comes to like what you need like kyle said just to die the core rule book and some friends but of course you can play it by yourself if you really wanted to mm-hmm. Who needs but you could also play with your enemies if you want you to, could play with your enemies Ooh. i will solve my problems through quest <laughs> duels <laughs> <laughs> time to do to do, do, do. <laughs> That's Look, I've amazing. heard worse solutions. That, don't, don't spoil my next upcoming module, the Yu-Gi-Oh! module. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what kind of stories and themes is this game meant to explore, then? Uh, traditional fantasy, basically. Yeah. Uh, hmm. So the way that the book is currently set up is definitely meant to explore traditional fantasy themes. Mm-hmm. Um similar sort of vein to the show to the game we don't mention um <laughs> but some of the things that it has like it it very much comes from a different place mm-hmm. than other fantasy games do oh, i'm gonna read the intro because that's yes. like what really sets the tone because like when you first open the book the very first thing you read is a little paragraph that says welcome friend this is a special place a retreat from your worries and obligations now close your eyes take a deep breath and open your mind ready let's begin and that's how the, st- the game starts like, right and that that tone is prevalent throughout the whole game which is uh, just phenomenal to see and like so if you read through the book it's very much a very familiar tone mm-hmm. that the book talks with you in but it's not a like talking down to you tone it's yeah. like the book talks to you like a friend yeah um very soft very caring 
instead of like here are the rules for all these <laughs> dice yeah it's you really want to know how to climb here's the math you need to do i i was when i was reading through this i was like this is this is like the cozy familiar hug of rpgs mm -hmm. which is uh really interesting to see and like so right now it's set up for fantasy games but i do know that the creator is planning on making sci-fi expansions for the game system mm. and creating other sort of expansions to kind of allow people to play different games with the quest sort of rpg system as mm -hmm. a basis yeah that makes a lot of sense Ooh, i'm excited what do characters do in this game a better question, what do you want your character to do in this system? <laughs> right? It's a very broad question. <laughs> uh, and it, it depends on the game, I should say. Some mm -hmm. games are very specific about what you're supposed to do. But. True. So in Quest, you're really set up to do a lot of things. Like, there's a lot of interaction-based moves for, like, abilities if you're, like, dealing with other people there's stuff for dealing with enemies you're fighting there's stuff for dealing with the environment mm -hmm. that it's really set up for you to just solve a bunch of problems but even if you don't have an ability that solves a problem you can still roll for it like the system is very open on how you interpret the rules um so truly the limit of what it sets up a person or a party to do Depends on the party themselves, what they think up, what they come up with, the sort of solutions that they determine. It, it's really up to the individuals and the type of story that's happening. For example, I've used Quest for an IPM game that we were doing. And one of the things that happened was that the players got a magic fairy wand that none of them knew how to use. So every time they tried to use it, I had them roll for it. And wacky things happen depending on how they roll. <laughs> So, like, it, it all just depends on the game and how your players and you as the guide approach the situation. Um, I will be the one to mention the game that will not be mentioned. Uh, so, what, TC Sotek, the uh, creator of Quest, uh, I've read a few of his interviews, um, and he talks about when he was went to go make Quest. He had only ever played Dungeons & Dragons before. Um, and he had looked at it and thought that it was, it was a bit too much for what he wanted and decided that he wanted to essentially make a very similar game to do the fantasy, the traditional fantasy, uh, setting in just a simpler way and in just a different way. Um, and so when he was creating it, he stepped, he took a step back and like away from like the indie market. So he didn't want to get influenced and in all these things, um, and just made his own thing by himself. So the only real inspiration that I know of, I'm not TC, I can't really say, um, is of D&D &D and that Tolkien fantasy. It just removes all the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it is anything you would do in one of those games, in one of those stories, in one of those books, you, do, you can do through Quest. That's amazing. It's, it's basically D&D &D with all the bad stuff, like you said. <laughs> 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 which, which there is a lot. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really interesting when looking through this and seeing a lot of familiar things, but also like, uh, fairly unique sort of things that I, that I haven't really thought of in like the fantasy genre role-playing games before, uh, which was really cool to see, um, which, which kind of leads right into the next question. What, what, do, what is unique about quest? Okay, so this I have a perfect answer to, because this is one of the things that drew me to this game when I was first looking at it. Okay, I'm going to scroll down and go look at the character creation things. Um, so with character creation, you have like different like skill paths and the moves and stuff like that. And there's a few that are really odd that, that like if you're reading it, you're like, this is fun. And then you think about it, you're like, oh, that's what that is. So I'm going to go look at, um, there's one move in particular. There's a couple that are like a little different, but the one in particular that is like the most zany and wild is from the doctor, uh, role. Uh, there is a move in the, which one is it? Uh, Diagnose. Diag, is it in healing? No. Which, which tree is that? Examination. The examination path called Diagnose. And it reads, I'm going to read it to you. 
So you touch a creature, extending your senses to diagnose a mysterious affliction, like a disease, spell, or curse. You must correctly guess the entire name of the affliction. If your guess is wrong, the spell fails, and you must spend one uh, adventure point to try again. The guide will give you blanks to fill in that show how many words are in the name, and how many letters are in each word. You may start by guessing letters that appear in the name. If you guess a letter correctly, the guide will reveal everything everywhere that letter appears in the name. If you guess incorrectly six times, the spell fails. Wow. You're playing hangman with your guide. <laughs> what? You're That's playing amazing. hangman as a as a mechanic in this game. That's amazing. What in the heck? There's <laughs> another example of this with the fighter. The very first thing in the fighter book is dueling. And the last ability of that entire tree is called Duel. Uh, basically, you fight a creature in single hand combat, and if you have the deck, you take the three car- the four cards for the previous abilities you've gotten, and you play Find the Queen with your DM. You <sighs> shuffle the cards around, you hold up a card so you can see it, and the, de- the guide has to guess what that card is. If they're wrong, you activate that ability for free, and then you continue on. Wow. And it just, like, the game makes little mini-games within itself. That is so interesting, and, like, set up so uniquely that I haven't seen in other games before. Yeah, that's and really there, wild. There are plenty of other, like, unique things in this. Those two were, like, the ones that, like, when we were... Because when I look at a game, the first thing I do as I go to the character creation process, I look at that and see what that's like, to see if I like it. Um, and those were what really jumped out at me at first. But like when you get into like the mechanics of the game and how like you would uh, you actually play, like uh, the ranges of like the distances. That's what it's called. The distances. There's instead of like doing math and like this is sixty feet or thirty feet and all this stuff. It is either in reach, nearby, in range, or too far, and that's all you have to do. There's no movement. There's no like distances. It's just the basics of. Uh, you can move a little closer. Yeah, it's a little too far. Um, hmm. Another thing to mention: there's no money in the system, as in, like, money exists in your world. It's just assumed that your players have enough money to buy food, to stay hmm. at an inn, to do like regular things. But if they want to buy something special or do something super special, they normally have to trade something. Or they have to do a favor for someone. Mm -hmm. And it allows for more of a bartering system in the game. And the other thing is, you only have 12 pieces of equipment. That's it. Yeah, I did notice that on the character sheet. That, like, there's the spots and it's, like, very clear. Like, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you get these ones. This is all you get. And it's it's not set up in a sense of, like, haha, we're limiting you. It's Mm -hmm. set up in a sense of, like, just put what's important. Yeah. You don't need to put that you have a 50 foot hemp and rope, three torches, one crowbar, <laughs> 50 caltrops. Just put what's important. If you ask the guide, hey, do I have this? The guide more often than not will say yes. Mm-hmm. But what about adventurer. encumbrance rules? Oh no, I want to know how slowly <laughs> I move when I hold two more pounds than I normally I want this to be like can. Fallout where I have to get rid of something or I can't run. Listen, I just play tested something my friends making and they're doing that and I was like, I love you, but please no. Please if you no. would like to continue being friends, this is gonna go. <laughs> this is my note for you for the play test. <laughs> Although... <laughs> I do like me a crunchy game sometimes, but maybe not as an RPG mm-hmm. in a, in a like, tabletop Not everything's sense. for everyone, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's very true. But yeah, that's that's there's a lot of good, unique things about this that I, I, I didn't glean from just going over the rules, uh, you know, quickly. Uh, there's so is, much. Yeah. There, there, there is a lot in this game, but it's like so simple in terms of how it presents itself. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. Let's talk a little bit about the history of this game. Where did it come from? That kind of thing. Uh, this thing was kickstarted. I know that. I don't know much about this part. I see yeah. your notes and I'm like reading those and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. This is the uh, Amelia and Ryan look up this thing on Wikipedia. Although you can't sure. because it's called Quest. It's too yeah. new. It's the, the, uh, the SEO on this is uh, 
it got to be mm. nightmarish because it is nightmarish. Like, I mean, you can look up Quest RPG and, and get to it. Um, you can look up the the Adventure Guild, uh, which is also kind of a generic name if you mm-hmm. think about it. But with the I popularity, should have called us first. We would I have will had some say, hot tips. Quest has the best website, which is Adventure It That's is. It. It's amazing. It's just like just that like URL. Mm-hmm. I'm just like wow. How mm-hmm. simple. Brilliant. It reflects How the, it, simple. It's very like reflective of the game itself. Simple, gets to the point, and it tells you what you're doing. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so I, it was released in 2019 uh, by the Adventure Guild, LLC. Um, and it it recently kind of gained a resurgence in the spotlight uh, because of all the uh, the stuff going on at the, the unnamed giant rpg in the industry Cal's already named it I yeah know. Uh, <laughs> and also we've done an episode on it and we talk mm-hmm. about it all the time i so, mean that's very true you know. <laughs> uh yeah so uh, recently within the last what month or so uh mm-hmm. there's been a, a large uproar on twitter because of uh various bad practices that uh wizards of the coast has been employing um at their company and also the uh the problematic content of D and uh, traditional and otherwise, that is just um, kind of, kind of, just not good to have in a modern RPG. Unnecessary mm. and grotesque. Yeah. So a lot of people were looking for uh, some an alternative to telling these fantasy stories, and uh, Quest seemed to be kind of the front runner uh, at mm-hmm. that point. And so recent stuff that's happened is that with everyone jumping to Quest very quickly, uh, a lot of the community started to question, hey, why are we jumping to another monolith? When the creator has talked kind of about how he wants this to be an Instagrammable game, he wants it to be a pretty game, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was last week or the week before, uh, the creator of the game released a uh, creator's license, yeah. creator's guide. I did mm-hmm. see that, yeah. Basically saying, hey, create whatever you want, mm-hmm. charge however much you want. All you have to do is let people know you have to attribute it. That's it. Just be like, yeah. hey, this is based off of Quest. Yeah. Which, when you consider what D&D has done with practices like dm's guild and that kind of thing and how they work they say hey you can use our name but we own your work yeah which is a very predatory practice and i know some people are fine with it but me personally i've always felt a bit squidgy about Mm -hmm. that especially for the fact that like they can take down so this happened with a with the eat the rich anthology uh, they made their anthology, they posted it on DM's Guild, and DM's Guild took it down. Mm. And the people who made it were like, hey, can we post it somewhere else? And DM's Guild said, no, it's ours now, it's not going anywhere else. Oh, wow. Because once you've uploaded it, it doesn't belong to you anymore. Oh. Um, yeah, I've seen a few instances of that with DM's yes. Guild. It's been happening it's a very... lot lately. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, th- this is a full Creative Commons license uh, attribution mm-hmm. 4.0, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And I, yeah, like the only thing is you need to attribute it um, and you can't do word for word direct translations. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's the only limitations on it, which is really but cool to see. They do say if you want to translate it to another language, contact us and we'll talk to you. Yeah, mm-hmm. it sounds like, hey, if you're willing to do the work, we're willing to probably pay you. Yeah, uh, for that, which is really amazing to see, um, uh, especially you know uh, in this day and age with the RPG industry. I, I really yeah. like the the direction that this is going. When me well, um, and I, I really like anything too that like encourages artists and creators to charge for the work that they're doing. Because yeah. you put in time, you put in effort. You like you deserve to make money for those things. You know. So. One of the things in the book that, like, I believe is towards the beginning of the book. Yeah, the toss a coin. Yes, is the toss a coin. It's like a section in the book that says, hey, we don't really care how you got this. We don't really care why you have it. But if you liked it, feel free to buy it off our website. Mm -hmm. It's not like, hey, if you have this illegally, we're going to hunt you down. Right. Like some other companies act like but it's very much like hey like it's that same familiar tone of like it's okay 
We understand times are rough, times are hard, but if you can, toss us a coin. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Like, what does it say here? Games like Quest are meant to be shared with friends, and we're very glad you're here. Mm-hmm. It, it's so interesting to have this like super familiar, like welcoming tone uh, in this through throughout, and and having that right there in the first couple pages is just phenomenal. When Prison Pals was first uh, talking about making the switch to Quest for our show, um, I reached out to TC directly just to like touch base and just to, just see uh, just to like just talk to him as a person, be like, "Hey, we're doing it. We're going to be playing your game." And immediately he was like just as amicable in like the the book. He's very like friendly and was very open and like happy to see that we were using the game and encouraging of it Mm -hmm. um and he was like i can't really do anything for you because we're still small but like it's really nice to see you doing this and we'll i really hope to uh grow together through Mm -hmm. it it was really nice to see that um the we switched back in may right Mm -hmm. we were one of the first ones to switch to quests like publicly it was us and off the table with the two things that we're both tied to directly yes uh well because we switched when the when everyone found out that Mike Merles was still working at mm. Wizards, mm. Um, when that big reveal dropped, that hey, guess what? He's actually been working on the RPG this entire time. We just haven't been telling you all, um, and we just don't really care. Yeah, yeah they don't. so that's when we initially jumped over, and we were lucky. We like got there just in time to be like, "Hey, TC, hello. This is what we're doing. Hi." <laughs> And then yeah. everyone else showed up, and then I'm assuming his inbox just blew up. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Because he legitimately on Twitter has been like, there's so much going on, I need, like, a hot minute, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's really interesting, like, like the the trajectory that, that Quest has had, because, like you said, it was only released in 2019, but that mm-hmm. was, like, the Kickstarter. It was Kickstarted in 2019, around this time, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually just, like, was, like, searching it in my email. I, I, like, found the notification from Kickstarter saying, this new game is up, you should back it. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, they, they Kickstarted in 2019, and it didn't actually release, like, publicly until 2020, February. Oh. So, like, a month before quarantine hit, and it's like no one heard of it, no one was talking about mm-hmm. it really. And then as soon as the D and D stuff happened, everyone was talking about it. Yeah. So like that climb was wild to me. Oh, I can imagine. Uh do we do you know uh by chance just out of curiosity how well the Kickstarter did? I don't. I can look it up. Real quick. I, I assume it I funded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Since we have the game. Quest the role playing game, Kickstarter. Uh the original goal was sixty five thousand. The uh, end, the what they reached was one hundred fifty three thousand. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, yeah, that's nice. Very cool. We love Kickstarter. <laughs> oh God! Especially now that they've allowed their unions. Yes. Mm-hmm. Bless unions. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's that's basically the history of Quest. Uh, and and now here we are, and we've got that creative uh, license for anybody to just go do stuff with. Um, I am extraordinarily tempted to create a Magical Girls uh, quest uh, game. Uh, we always need more Magical Girl games. I know. Our uh, a friend we've played with made Glitter Hearts, and oh, we're yeah. just like, yes, yes, more Magical Girls, let's uh-huh. go. <laughs> yep. If I wasn't already working at Chimera, I would probably go and, and, and create a Magical Girls for this one. Mm-hmm. Ugh. If only I've already seen people releasing roles. I've already seen people releasing like mini modules, that kind of thing. And it's been like a week and a half, and I'm like, wow, mm-hmm. everybody's so creative, and I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fair. I could just do a role, and mm-hmm. that would work. Wow. Okay, I got things to think about, but I'll I'll table <laughs> that for later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, before we get into the actual character creation, uh, there are some basic terms and concepts uh, that I'd love to go over. Um, and I only found three things that uh, were f- maybe even worth talking about, uh, maybe four. Uh, so I, I saw success bands. That might be uh, a little difficult for some people uh, to grok right away. Um, can you talk a little bit about what what the success bands mean in this game it's 
It's very reminiscent of Powered by the Apocalypse games. Mm-hmm. So if you've played Powered by the Apocalypse games and you're familiar with the uh, 10 plus uh, full hit, the 7 and 9 partial hit, and the below 7 uh, no hit, it's very similar. It's just slightly different in a, a 1 to 20 scale. Mm-hmm. So uh, in the game, whenever you roll for something, which they do specify, if like your, uh, your role is like the doctor and like none of your things really pertain to what you're doing but it's like a doctor type thing you don't have to roll for it it's just you roll for the things where you don't under if you don't know it doesn't make sense Mm. for your character to know what it's doing Mm. so um you make the roll um there's no modifiers to the roll there's no stats in this game Mm. uh you just make the roll uh and whatever the die says on uh one to 20 is what you do and you consult the five tiered uh the bands that's what's called bands um so at the top is the triumph which is a 20 a natural 20 Mm -hmm. um this is an exciting moment you automatically succeed at what you're trying to do and you may even find added fortune if you're dealing damage double it so that's like whatever you're doing you hit it and you did the extra bit too Mm -hmm. uh the success band is 11 to 19 you accomplish what you were trying to do without any compromises if you're dealing damage do the standard amount so that's just like you did it congratulations Six to ten is the tough choice. You succeed in your action, but there's a cost. The guide will give you a choice between two setbacks. That's um, then there's the two to five, which is just failure. You fail your intended action and fa- face a setback of the guide's choice. So with the tough choice, you get to choose between two. With the failure, the guide implements one on you. Mm. Uh, you might lose equipment, take damage from an enemy counterattack, or face some other misfortune. And the final one is catastrophe, which is a natural one. Oh no, you automatically <laughs> fail and you may su- suffer a severe setback. I just realized that it literally says oh no, which it feels <laughs> so on brand. <laughs> it's when you roll the nat one and you go, oh no. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so one of the things with the success bands that's very important to realize is that with this game, you should only be rolling for things when there's a chance of failure. It doesn't make sense to roll for, like, a bunch of things, and, like, perception checks don't really exist in this game, which you might have from other games, just because there's no real way to, as a guide, give a setback for certain things. So, like, having someone open a door, if it's not trapped, why are they rolling for it? That kind of thing. So, one of the things that I've seen from some games that I've witnessed is people will ask for a roll and then realize, oh, I need to give a setback. I don't know what to give you as a setback here. Mm -hmm. So, like, figuring that out, especially if you're transitioning from other games, can be difficult, If you're, especially if you're transitioning from games that don't have that sort of kind of failure mechanic, the Mm -hmm. success Mm -hmm. bands. It's more difficult to get a hang of. Um, But it doesn't have to be, like, end-of-the-world kind of setback. Mm -hmm. Um, For one of the games I ran, the character tried to hop on the back of a giant swan, and the swan had never been ridden before, so I had them roll. And they rolled a a tough choice. Actually, no, they rolled a full failure, and so the swan went to bite them, and instead of biting them, broke the reins and then flew away. (laughs) So, like... It wasn't the end of the world. They could still get where they needed to get, but it just got a little harder. Mm -hmm. So that's like one of the important things with the system, especially when you're guiding and trying to help people roll for things and calling for things. That's awesome. I I really like how it's kind of a blend of traditional D20 and PBTA right in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, so hit points, uh, a lot of people are probably familiar with the concept of hit points that your health pool, et cetera, et cetera, but this game handles them, uh, slightly differently, uh, from what I've kind of, uh, gleamed looking through the rules a little bit. Can we talk about hit points a little bit? You got 10. Yeah. That's it. That's it. No more, no less. You never, you you can't have less. (laughs) You never grow in hit points. That's, that's wild. Russ wild. Yes. Uh, so if you've read, <laughs> I've read the cre- the creation license, the creator's license thing. One of the re- one of the things that it talks about with hit points is there's a reason that they never go up. 
The reason that they never go up is because you never want to create a slog fest, mm. which is what a lot of higher level D&D turns into. It turns into a who can lose the most hit points the fastest mm. rather than a interesting sort of story you tell. Um, so one of the things that he says in the creator's guide is, hey, don't give abilities that increase the hit points because you never really hit super hard. And you never really get hit super hard. Mm. It's it's not how the system is wor- working. It's not numbers aren't above like ten in most cases. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The only time you really get above that is if you have a super powerful boss, like end game boss might have like forty hit points, mm. and that's the max hit points they have, and like that kind of thing. But it, it's one of those things where you look at it. And, hey, hopefully you know how to subtract from 10. The math isn't too hard there. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Is there? Is Which, there any... Th- you said there's ways that you might be able to uh, have less hit points aside from so, just damage. Yes. So, there is a legendary ability for the invoker. Uh, legendary abilities are basically abilities that summarize your role. Mm. Uh, like a capstone or a prestige. Um, and so the invoker has an ability called resurrection, I believe, mm. which what it does is you can resurrect other PCs or NPCs who have died, but you lose two hit points. Oh, wow. Permanently. Oof. That's a and cost. Once you, you lose all of your hit points, you become a wraith, Ooh. which is another legendary ability. And you basically gain that legendary ability permanently, and you are stuck in that form. Wow. So the the caster is losing the hit points permanently. Yes. Mm-hmm. The person mm-hmm. that they revive comes back probably 10 health and all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. The, actually, really I think it's called, called sacrifice. sacrifice, yes. I was oh, just about to say that. That's really cool. I read cool. it recently. That's really cool. I like that. Interesting. And is there any way to go above... 10 hit points with like temporary health or or any sort of like items or equipment or anything like that that's how shielding works in this game so like there's no armor class or anything like that there's no like cap to me it's shielding is just like buffer points basically oh cool so it just seems like it's pretty basic all throughout i like that uh interesting okay i have a lot of questions but uh let's (laughs) let's move on to uh adventure points so, adventure points are basically your points that you use to do things, like your special <laughs> abilities that you have. Um, some of your abilities have points to activate or points to activate more powerful versions of them, that kind of thing. Um, you start the game with 10. When you first start playing, you start with 10. At the end of every session, you gain 5. Mm. But during a session, because you'll probably be burning them through them pretty quickly, mm-hmm. you gain them for like solving puzzles, figuring mm-hmm. out riddles, meeting new characters, gaining new allies, that kind of thing. It's really up to the guide's discretion. Um, one of the ways that we've used, that we're now using uh, adventure points is as like, a spending system of like, hey, I want to do something extra with someone else that isn't described in our abilities, and I'll be like, hey, okay, spend a few more adventure points, and you can do it. Um, this is we used to do this in D anD D when we were playing it, and we used inspiration for that because I like to give inspiration out like candy. Because mm-hmm. if you really don't want that bad roll, go for it. Use your inspiration. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a really simple system. Start out with 10, get five at the end of the session. Very nice. Uh, so I, I heard you mention, and it's breaking my brain a little bit. Uh, this game doesn't have stats. Nope. No stats, no ability scores, nothing. Yeah. So everybody's on equal playing field throughout, Mm -hmm. which the only thing that really like dictates your, your character is the role and the path you choose. Everything okay. else is, and and also your character profile, mm-hmm. uh, and to probably a lesser extent equipment that you have, stuff mm-hmm. like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Very cool. I like that. Okay. What well, is there any uh, anything any other concepts or terms that we might need to know going into character creation that I might have missed? So there's like 
a few big things. There's roles. Roles are basically this game's version of classes. Mm-hmm. Uh, learning paths, which are the specific sort of paths within a role. Uh, not really subclasses, but mm. kind of. They almost look like almost like kind of skill tree. Yes. Yeah, like it's skill like, trees. Yes. It's the closest thing in a, in a TTRPG you'll get to a skill tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there are abilities, which are the items on a skill tree. That's okay. basically it, as far as I know. Kyle, anything? I think we've covered everything. Yeah, Yeah, that's basically it. Very cool. Well, we'll get into all of that more in depth. Uh, Are we ready to make some people? Let's do it. Let's make some people. Let's make some people. I'm super excited for this. Yeah, me too. Oh my god! I love this character sheet. Character Um, sheet is beautiful. Art's beautiful. It's all so good. I am... the the form there's a form fillable one uh character sheet that you get with the game uh there's one that's like the character profile and there's one that's a worksheet and there's one that's like both of them combined in a form fillable uh format um the form fillable one i actually just emailed tc before we started because i forgot to email him a while ago because the form fillable one as it is has some issues with it with when you actually fill it out like four of the boxes might be connected and it might try to say i wear Armor, and it says, I wear armor, armor, and move with armor. I'm from armor. <laughs> and you oh, can't no. fix it. Oh. And then, like, the HP and the AP uh, sections can't fill in. So, like, I emailed him. I was like, hey, we fixed it on our end, but, like, can you fix this, please? Yeah. <laughs> Just for the website and for people who want to play the game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> another member of Prison Palace, Mariam, they had to go in and, like, on Adobe and just fix it so we could use them. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right, so I do have uh, the character sheets here as well. Um, I don't think they are form fillable though, but this is why it was—it's literally just uh, a paragraph. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So uh-huh. how the game sets up uh, for char- for players is that you make a character profile and then you present it to the group uh-huh. as you start the game, like when you first sit down to play. One of the thing the guide one of the things that the guide does is they make a world profile talking about where you're starting, where you're going, what the world is like, that kind of thing. I know this is a podcast more focused on character creation. Oh no, we but... love world building. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you, it that, is that tone did not convince me at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, we really love world yeah, building. World, collaborative world building is probably second very closely if not first in some cases to character creation mm-hmm. yeah and okay i'm actually gonna print this world profile it's <laughs> basically <laughs> beautiful <laughs> the world profile is the guide's version of a character profile because the world is a character too in a sense it, it responds it reacts it exists so um, it's meant to be starting with like the starting area where everyone starts and then scope outwards. Um, you don't need to know every single little detail about your world. It's more about like where the players are now, what they're doing now, that kind of thing. Mm. So character creation. Uh, let's discuss that for a second. Yeah, that let's sounds, do it. Yes, good. host Rust. <laughs> host Rust, I'm the host. Someone now. has to keep us on track. <laughs> I have shown up. I'm taking over the podcast. <laughs> so, you have your eight roles, mm. uh, which I will try and read if I can find the page with the eight mm. roles. Page 22. It's on page 22. Thank you. Ooh, Fighter, Invoker, Ranger, Naturalist, Doctor, Spy, Magician, and Wizard mm-hmm. are the eight roles that come with quest um one of the things that quest talks about is that hey you can pick one role and stick with it but there are other ways to play the game like everybody could be dual rolled you pick two roles and build out that way or screw the roles pick whatever abilities you want (laughs) and it's really set up so you can do that however you want it to do and still have a very balanced character but very versatile. So you wow. can go into multiple different areas. So when you're creating a starting character, what you do is you pick six abilities total. 
Um, if you're going with a single role g- a thing, then you pick six abilities from your role, like fighter, that kind of thing, mm-hmm. dual role, dual role kind of thing. And like you said before, these are skill trees. So you have to take the first ability before you can get the second ability on a path. So you need to pick them in order down the path, but you can pick from multiple paths. Mm. Or you could just start out the gate with an entire skill path. Mm-hmm. All wow. picked. There's no prerequisites. Yeah. You can just start off and be like, I have this entire path. Thank you. <laughs> yes. You could be like, I have all of the abilities from the dual path and two abilities from one other path. Wow. So the, the most diverse you could be at the beginning is six different classes with the beginning ability on mm-hmm. one of their paths. Yep. Yeah. Each roll has, I think, about five paths. Give or take. Mm-hmm. With like three to five abilities, depending on the path. Goodness. All right, Ryan, what do you think? Oh Lord, there's there's <laughs> so many good ones. Um, my the one that I personally, if I was gonna sit down and play this game in a campaign, the one that that kind of uh stood out to me as the most of me would be the Invoker. So I don't want to do that one. <laughs> okay, because I was kind of thinking maybe I would do that one. Now, I want to clarify that I did see that under Doctor there is Necromancer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to rein myself in and for once in my life not make a Necromancer. Wow. Why would you I do know. that? Because I, I think I have like the last like two or three series. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so I don't see a problem. I'm going to like, I'm gonna, like not do that. I'm gonna Amelia really can have a little Necromancy as a treat. A little Necromancy. As a treat. Look, okay, no, but like last time it was, to be fair, entirely on accident. That's very true. It was, it was it, you, all up to that heritage table role. Accidental so. Necromancy is, uh, you know, it's is still perfectly necromancy. okay. <laughs> How do you become an accidental necromancer? I feel um, like there are extra steps there. Yeah, I, so I rolled on a table that was like, oh, actually, you know blood magic. Oh. Um, so. By the way. <laughs> how By avatar way, of actually, you. Actually, you were, you were maybe dabbling in blood magic. Yeah. So. Powerful roll random tables you have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I so love I'm a gonna, good random table. Oh my gosh, I love them so much. We did... Um, aside we did a panel at a catacon this year where we took random tables from a bunch of different games and we had our audience roll on tables and then we made characters based on what we got off of these rolls mm-hmm. um and they were a mess <laughs> <laughs> they were it was oh they, yeah they were all mutant animals somehow we kept on rolling all... on the mutant animal tables from palladium yeah they were all mutant animals they did all wear hats mm-hmm. um yeah Amazing. There was radioactive spaghetti. Oh, yeah. There was radioactive spaghetti. uh, Yeah. Warehouses. And a law firm. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) It it was very cyberpunk and uh, very interesting. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I think I'm going to do Invoker. Oh, fun, fun. Okay. I'm still thinking. So, uh, Kyle, Russ, what what are you thinking about? I'm going to do Spy. I'm going to make an assassin. Nice. Darn right. it, Kyle. <laughs> Language, Russ. <laughs> Darn it, Kyle. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> hey, you can both make spies. No, you can't. No, Go can't. away, Russ. Okay. Stay away from me. <laughs> okay. I'm the only spy here. So then, uh, since I wanted to be spy, because my issue is that I always pick druid, and there's like two druid, abil- druid classes here, <laughs> like ranger and naturalist are both druid and ranger kind of like mixed in between the two Mm -hmm. of them all right uh and i always take that so instead i'm gonna go doctor because i never play a cleric doctor doctor give me the name okay so we got an invoker a doctor a spy um the magician seemed kind of interesting to me because of the word psychic uh in there uh because i love me some psionics uh, but it looks like it's uh, like illusionary magic and parlor mm-hmm. tricks and stuff like that. Um, and that, eh, not. I feel like you want to go naturalist. You think? I don't know. I just feel like you know that's what? you. You know what? Um, yeah, let's do it. I'm going to go naturalist because I, I like mean, flowers the- and uh, druids are cool. The magician has the scariest skill treat, the learning path to me, called mannequins. It terrifies me. <laughs> but also, oh, sounds great. <laughs> oh, my. Yep. Okay. What? Okay. 
I mean, you're talking about mannequins and spooky stuff like that. Maybe, spooky, maybe I scary. do want to go. Also, the R for the magician is just top notch. Oh, that's fantastic! Multiple arms. Yep. A fake face with glasses. That's pretty cool. Oh, mannequins! Come on, clairvoyance, conjuration, mind control, mayhem. Uh, I know. I don't know why I'm taking so long on on picking a class. That's um, another thing with uh, it's a big choice. With the magician, they do mind control, but it's not like mind control in games that you're used to, yeah. where it's kind of icky and gross. Um, yep. This mind Blech. control is very much doesn't cross that line of okay. into not things we want to talk about. You know what? Um, I want to I want to create a, a pew pew sort of person. Uh, so I'm going to go wizard. All right, pew 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 pew, magical pew pew. Um, all right, cool. So uh, I am a wizard. You're a wizard, Ryan. <laughs> You're a wizard, Ryan. <laughs> so that would be I'm the party's wizard, right? Yep. Yep. Cool. So what's next? Number two, enter the scene. Ooh. So it looks like we're playing Mad Libs at this point. Yeah, yeah. essentially. So this this theme of game games within games uh, seems to be pretty prevalent even in character creation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it. Uh because, like, the one thing that the character profile does not have is a place to put your um, abilities, which I think is because there's a deck that you can get. If I'm wrong, Ross, am I wrong? I mean, that's the core deck I was showing earlier. The okay, was yeah. The core deck, you get, you would have tarot cards with all of your abilities in it, mm. um, which is... but So, like, your character profile has nothing to do with your abilities. It's just your role is all that really matters when you're introducing yourself. So it's not like, I have this ability and this ability and that ability. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So what you're supposed to do with the deck is you take the decks and everyone takes their cards from it and then they have it in front of them. So they have their abilities easily listed in front of them. Okay. Very easy to reference. Nice. And you go, oh, I should have six cards. There are six cards in front of me. Great. That's pretty cool. Not, did I forget to level up this session where what am I supposed to have? How many spells? Did I get new spells yet? (laughs) <laughs> so instead, do i remember what those spells do uh-huh so after making uh taking a roll you choose your role and the next thing at the end of the scene like amelia said uh when you fill out the next sentence which is when people see me they first notice my blank blank and blank and you fill those three lines in with something about your body something about your face and then your vibe i, I love that you're you're basically creating your own uh, your own fantasy race here, if you want. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, there's no races. Because head of tentacles is, is an, option. an option for your body. And these are all just suggestions. You yeah. can make up whatever you want. God, that that is such an evocative head of. There's t- also vestigial tail and webbed fins. Yeah, like there's a whole bunch. I'm super into iridescent skin. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I'm picking that. I'm going stout stature. Right. I'm, I just made my own. I'm going well, I'm, good for you, Kyle. Yeah. Someone <laughs> so is an overachiever. I just decided to go full chaos and to uh, just like make something that doesn't like exist in a stereotypical fantasy world. So my body is made of mist. Ooh. Ooh. Good you for mean an air genasi? No, I'm literally mist. <laughs> you mean Strahd? <laughs> no, Russ, missed. <laughs> yeah, like somebody's <laughs> wanting them near because they miss them. If you want me to hug you, you get moist. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that so much. Do you, though? <laughs> Why would you speak that into this world? <laughs> So for face, I chose off the list this time. <laughs> Kyle, the voice uh, of reason. Romantic eyes? I th- body of mist, romantic eyes? Ooh. I thought they worked well together. Like, ooh, I'll seduce you from afar, my mistly presence. Uh, <laughs> the third option that they give you on the chart in the book is vibe, which, love those. Yeah, there's a lot of good things in there. Yes, so I, in total, for my body, I have stout stature, for my face, I have the antenna, and for my vibe, I have androgynous vibes. Ooh. Oh, that's actually on the list, too. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I saw that and went, yes. (laughs) 
I don't know if I want manicured fuzz on my face or time-worn face. I will say about vestigial antenna, it doesn't tell you where the antenna are on your face. So <laughs> That's true. Surprise, surprise, everybody. Let's find out. <laughs> antenna beard. <laughs> Doesn't well, say how many either. Vest- Kyle. Vestigial is um, not useful, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. You could be um, Davy Jones uh, from Pirates of the Caribbean. You know what? I've already got full octopus. I've already got tentacles. I've got a head of tentacles for my body, which I don't know how that works. Um, I'll go with antennas. My vestigial. Your body antenna. is a head of tentacles. My body is a You're head of tentacles. You're just a floating head. Am I just all tentacles? With the antenna, with, with you're, antenna you're, that are you're like, a blob of appendages. My little That's t- all you are. My little tiny tentacle antenna. <laughs> I like to think that you have like one that's hidden inside your tentacles. <laughs> your antenna's like hidden by the tentacles. Oh, wow. It's weird that they're like vestigial though, because like I would love it if they just like popped out. Mm-hmm. Boop. All right. And I went with a severe jawline and a captivating grin. Ooh. Ooh. Mm-hmm. We love a severe jawline. I'm going to go with. Gentle. Amelia making an actual person while the rest of us are making <laughs> Look. visceral monsters. <laughs> uh, I, I, I went you, with that. Uh, okay. Uh, when people see me, they first notice my head of tentacles, vestigial antenna, and gentle disposition. Oh, it's a That's soft a Ryan choice. <laughs> a soft appendage monster. Yeah. <laughs> I did. When people see me, they first notice my body of mist, romantic eyes, and an air of mystery. Ooh. It's like, Mystery. Why, it's like, why are you missed? <laughs> and your air. An oh, air of oh, no. mystery. No. Big brain move. Big brain. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I got cute eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, the puns. Oh my gosh. I love it. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like A Woman with Hollow Eyes. A Woman with Hollow Eyes is a podcast adaptation of One Shot's live stream dramatic Invisible Sun actual play. Discover a world of magic, secrets, and supernatural civic disputes in our unique take on Saturine. In the first season, James D'Amato, Cat Cool, and SNL writer Alan Linick are led on a mind-bending adventure by GM Darcy Ross. Even if you already saw the streams, you want to listen to this podcast for the incredible soundtrack composed and edited by Will Levendahl. 
Get it by searching for A Woman with Hollow Eyes or Darcy Ross on iTunes, Google Play, or your favorite podcast app.